In this video, we're going to take a look at photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So by the end of this video, you are going to be able to compare and contrast the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration, as well as explain their complementary roles in ecosystems. So to get started, we first need a little bit of background knowledge about chemical reactions. So a chemical reaction is a process that transforms one or more substances into one or more new and different substances. And so what happens in a chemical reaction is that atoms are rearranged. In a chemical reaction, the starting materials are called reactants, and the substances that are created are called products. And generally, we write that reactants with an arrow form products. So now that we know that, um, let's take a look at photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So in nature, these are two very important reactions that occur in living organisms, and they are essential to most life on Earth. Starting with photosynthesis, if we break the word down, photo means light and synthesis means to put together or compose. And so photosynthesis is a process used to convert the sun's energy or sunlight into chemical energy. Now, in plants, the substances in leaves that absorb the light is called chlorophyll, and the chemical energy is stored in glucose or sugar. And so the reaction here that occurs is that water, or six waters, react with six carbon dioxides, and they take the light energy and then convert that into glucose, which is C6H12O6, as well as uh, oxygen. Cellular respiration is a process that releases uh, usable energy in the form of what we call ATP from the chemical energy that's stored in glucose molecules. So all animals, all living things, all cells need a continuous supply of energy in order to function because they need it to grow, to repair, and to reproduce. Cellular respiration happens in both plants and animals. And uh, since animals do not do photosynthesis, they have to eat glucose um, and get their glucose by eating food, which they're eating plants or eating other animals that have already consumed the plants. If we take a look at the reaction here, glucose then, C6H12O6, reacts with oxygen and is broken down into water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2, and it also then releases energy. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration are reactions that complement each other in the environment. They are in reality the same reactions, but occurring in reverse of each other. So as you can see, photosynthesis requires the products of respiration, while respiration requires the products of pho photosynthesis. So they work together so that what is made from one process is used in the other, which allows the carbon dioxide and the oxygen or the carbon and the oxygen that organs, organisms consume and produce to be cycled through the ecosystem. This helps to regulate atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Another thing these reactions have in common is that they both deal with the conversion of energy. In photosynthesis, light energy is captured from the sun and stored in glucose, in cellular respiration, however, the energy in glucose is converted into chemical energy by living organisms. So this energy allows their bodies to perform life-sustaining activities. Now that we've explored some of the similarities between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, let's compare and contrast the two processes together. So in photosynthesis, food is made, whereas in respiration, food is broken down. Uh, in photosynthesis, energy from the sunlight is stored in glucose, whereas in respiration, the stored energy in glucose is released. In photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken in, whereas in respiration, CO2 is released. In photosynthesis, oxygen is given off, 
whereas oxygen is taken in in respiration. In photosynthesis, this occurs in plants, algae, as well as certain types of bacteria, whereas respiration happens in all living organisms. Light is needed for photosynthesis, whereas no light is needed for respiration. And finally, photosynthesis occurs in organelles called chloroplasts, whereas respiration happens in the mitochondria and the cytoplasm. Now, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are interconnected and essential to life on Earth. These systems allow the carbon and the oxygen that organisms consume and produce to be cycled through the ecosystem. They work together so that what is made from one process is used in the other. Without them, the ecosystem would run out of carbon dioxide and oxygen, which means all the plants would die and oxygen requiring life would not survive. Finally, let's just take a quick look at the impact on ecosystems. So photosynthesis and cellular respiration are essential in maintaining the interconnected relationship between plants, humans, and animals, and directly or indirectly affect all life on Earth. Photosynthesis serves as the primary energy process for most trees and plants. Their energy continues on to fuel nearly all other organisms in the ecosystem, from bacteria to animals. The vast majority of Earth's ecosystems are ultimately supported by sunlight, so some organisms use the energy produced by plants directly, some eat organisms that ate plants, some eat organisms that ate organisms that ate plants, and so on. Ultimately, food webs lead back to the energy produced by plants through photosynthesis. Organisms consume this energy, which is stored within sugars and unlocked through cellular respiration to power their activities. So as a result, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are incredibly important in ecosystem ecology. That sums up then the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration and their importance to ecosystems. So let's move on to our next task. <laughs> 